I'm going to set up dynamic DNS on a wildcard domain name for my home server. So I would like to have apps running on subdomains, like app1.curiousdirectory.com might be a node app, and app2.curiousdirectory.com might be a Golang app, and wildcard domain names let me have as many subdomains as I want on there. I also want dynamic DNS because my home network IP address may change from time to time. If my modem disconnects from my ISP, then I might get a new IP address and dynamic DNS works such that I'll install software that sends a message occasionally to my domain name provider and to let them know about any updates to the IP address on the network and the domain name provider updates the DNS record appropriately. So let's take a look in my provider, no IP. They charge 30 bucks a year for dynamic DNS, which supports wildcard domain names. Um, and I think that's like the only real ongoing price other than electricity you'll have running your own web server. You could run one without a domain name and just hit your IP address, whatever you wanna do. I have this domain name, curiousdirectory.com registered and here's the wildcard domain name entry that let's take a look at the specific settings there. It's an A record with the wildcard enabled. Nothing too fancy there. So I will have to install that piece of software to run on my Linux machine called a dynamic update client that will ping the no IP server from time to time, letting them know about any updates to my IP address. So I'll just walk through the steps here, copy the link address and download it to user local circ. I'll download it with curl and I believe user local circ is owned by root. So I'm gonna have to run sudo for a few of these commands. and then just copy and paste a few of the unarchiving commands they have here. Run make, and then make install. And they're asking for my login to no IP, as well as my email and password. Two hosts are registered with this account. Do you want to have them all updated? Sure, why not? Update interval, the default looks like 30 seconds. That sounds good to me. Do you wish to run something su at successful update? I don't think so, other than just letting no IP know. So it created a configuration file for me and moved it into user local ETS no ip2.conf. I found a cool little system D service file for no IP by Nathan. Thanks, Nathan. And this will handle starting no IP whenever my computer restarts as well as when I enable it now. So I'm just going to copy this over. And this is supposed to go into that's system D system. in a file called noip2.service. And let me just check the permissions in this folder. I'll have to use sudo to create this file. Paste the contents in, whoops. Let me try that again. Write that file to disk and then run sudo system ctl enable no ip2 which seems to be successful it made some sin links and then let's start that service as well so the dynamic update client is running and i'll just check on that started daemon and it looks like it's running 
and that'll update every 30 seconds or so, letting no IP know about any IP changes. Now let's test this setup. I have an HTTP server here written in Node that doesn't do much other than listen on port 80 and serve a simple message from my Nook. Since it's going to run on port 80, which is privileged, I'll have to run it with sudo. And once that's started, I can visit app1.curiousdirectory.com and whatever subdomain I want, .curiousdirectory.com will point to my home server. So my DNS is all set up and working.